Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's NH3. The NH3 didn't get broken apart at all. It's just oh. the ammonia uh, attached to the silver. So yeah, it's AG, sorry, I missed that. NH3 taken twice. Okay, so now uh, we need to make an ice table. The question, remember, is what is the solubility? So this thing right here, again, is what we're going to try to solve for. Initially, what do we have here? Remember, this is a solid, so that doesn't have a concentration. The ammonia does, though. There was three molarity. And then initially, the silver ammonia complex, there is none. And iodide ion, there is none. So this is going to have to shift to the right. This is going to go down by some amount x. How's the ammonia going to change? Minus 2x. Look at the coefficients on it. It goes down by 2x. And then these both go up by x. So at equilibrium, that's nothing. That's 3 minus 2x. And then x and x. So solving for x here, we're going to use the k. k equals 2.5 times 10 to the negative 9 equals x squared over 3 minus 2x quantity squared. Can we make the math easy? Get rid of the change in 2x, that thing right there. Is x a small number? Yes. Yeah, even though um, it's not as small as the 10 to the negative 16, it's still very small. So it shifts to the right just a small amount. Let's neglect the 2x and uh, check it later and see if it works or if it was OK to do that. So that part is going to be 0. So what we have really is k equals x squared over 9, solve for x. Can I have somebody yell that out when you have it? x equals, and this is going to be the answer, uh, because when we solve for x, that is what the solubility of the silver iodine is. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4? Thank you. So what do we just do? This x that we got is how soluble silver iodide is in the ammonia solution. Now, to me, when I look at this, this is not very impressive. I look at this and think, well, gosh, I thought that it was supposed to really increase the, the, uh, uh, the dissolving ability or the, the solubility by adding a complex ion ligand, but it doesn't that much. However, when you think about, where is it? On the previous slide, when we just were trying to dissolve silver iodide in pure water, it would only dissolve to 10 to the negative 8th molarity. Having the ammonia in there increases its solubility by about 10,000 times. So I guess we'll give it some, some love. Yeah? Uh, how can we only use the 3 minus 2x squared for the denominator? Oh, because this is a solid. It doesn't go into the k expression. So the only thing we have on the reactant side that would go into the k expression on the denominator would be that one. Wait, 3m three, three for the problem? Yeah, it said, it, it did say in the problem, as soon as I can get up there. That it was uh, dissolved in three molarity ammonia. Yeah. Anything else about this? Okay. We'll continue complex ion problems tomorrow. Uh, got one more for you. I think there's only one more. We good? Oh, there's this. This is uh, uh, just a, a general thing. Man. Something like this would make a really nice multiple choice problem on a test, wouldn't it? How can you increase the solubility of one of these compounds that's not very soluble? Number one, if you want it to dissolve, and it's not dissolving well in water, if the anion in the compound is basic, add some acid to it. That'll help it to dissolve. That was what we did in the last reading assignment. And then if it's got a transition metal ion, like silver, like copper, and some others, uh, use a complex ion, or use a, add a ligand to it, uh, and hopefully a complex ion form.
you remember doing the lab yesterday? You had a flask. <laughs> Good. You had a flask, uh, and you were precipitating the silver thiocyanate, and it became white for a while, and then it changed from white at some point in that process to a dirty brown. Or maybe, maybe it changed to a dirty brown. What is dirty brown? Like, honestly, Wait, you don't know. know anymore. You didn't clarify. Yeah, I did. You just said dirty brown. You know the difference between white and brown? It's like this like yellow, how much brown. If you can see brown in the white solution, is that brown? Yeah, yeah. 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 No. It's a spectrum. Wow. It is a spectrum. I'm sure the, the scores are going to be fine. Except for Carol Jane and Sophia's. That was definitely white. Oh. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> sorry to bring that up and, and uh, cause you to Pain. raise your blood pressure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, when you were all done, I'm stuck with 11 flasks that had this white coating on them. You remember how after the first trial, you tried to rinse it out and the white coating did not rinse out? How did you feel about that white coating being on your flask? I have to say, I hate that. When I have dirty glassware, I don't know why it would be a hang-up for me, but I'm not drinking out of it, but I still hate it. I would want to clean it out every time. So now, I've got all this, and you probably tried to rinse it with water, and it did not take that, that coating off of it. So what am I going to do now? Uh, that, was, that was this compound, A-G-S-C-N. Very insoluble. I don't know what the KSP is, but it's low, and, and it does not want to dissolve. So I could rinse it all day with water if I wanted to. I'm not going to get it off of the glass. So I went over to my trusty bottle of concentrated ammonia, and uh, I poured that into one of the bottles, gave it a swirl, and within less than a second, it was perfectly clear again. I should have brought one over to show you because it's awesome. Um, so I just poured that ammonia from one flask to the next, and uh, within just a few seconds, all of them were totally clean. And that was because of this. It was, it was taking that little bit of silver that would have been dissolved and removing it and shifting the reaction to the right, making it completely dissolve out. Um, ah, maybe I'll try to remember that tomorrow. Sorry, band people. Uh, so I can show you uh, what that looked like. Because it was good. What? Tomorrow sounds like it's going to be a fun day. It will be a really good day. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. This... I believe is our last. Yes, this is all we're going to have time for. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at this one. The overall formation constant. Now, here's a new complex sign. Looks like this one's a pretty good complex sign. As you see, its k value. Check out that k value. It's got a formation constant of 10 to the 30th power. So very effective for dissolving mercury ions. <laughs> what are you saying, Matt? So I don't know what Diane, I'm not going to ask him to repeat that. So, so it's really ineffective uh, dissolving physics. Well, a lot of mercury compounds, like mercury chloride, you remember, is one of our chlorides that doesn't dissolve very well. But if you flood it with iodide ion like this, uh, it'll dissolve big time because that formation constant is so big. No. This is not something dissolving. Um, ah, this is not an ionic compound dissolving. You know how we, I told you put the solid on the left for all these? Unfortunately, this is an exception. It's not really an exception. It's a different kind of reaction. It's the formation of a complex ion. It's not where we're starting with the solid that's trying to dissolve. Okay? So, yeah, you need to differentiate between this and, and the other KSP kind of equations that we use. So when the mercury ion and four iodide ions get together and make this mercury iodide complex ion, it's got a formation constant of 1 times 10 to the 30th power. So the question is, what is the concentration of the mercury ion if we have 500 ml of a solution originally, so I'm going to go ahead and just write these concentrations down. 0 0.01 molarity for that originally, and 0 0.78 
molarity for that. Originally, that was zero. Okay, so this is our initial concentration. Do you see that K value? It's huge. Would you all agree that this reaction very heavily favors the right side? At equilibrium, we're going to have almost all this and very little of one of these. Yeah. I mean, we didn't start with the same concentration, so they don't both run out at the same amount. Uh, but one of these is going to run out and it's going to have just a tiny little concentration. Can you see that? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Now, we did something like this. I didn't use the same words last time we did this, but we did something very similar. We're going to have to wind up making a modified ice table, also known as what? Ah, an ice ah, table. That's right. We have to make an ice ah, table for this one. Because I have a general rule for you. I'm just going to scroll down like this. And I have something I would suggest that you write down. When the reaction. I'm going to abbreviate reaction, don't freak out. You okay with that for reaction? Ah, sorry about all the words. When the reaction is shifting in the favorable direction, in this case, the favorable direction definitely is the right. It heavily favors that direction. Have it go to completion This is what we did back when we made our other ass tables. I'll show you that. You take us back to several slides ago. Okay. You didn't finish saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to either. Don't you don't have to say bless you when, when I sneak. Oh. Okay, well we did. Oh, wow. <laughs> she has a point. <laughs> <laughs> not going there. We're so random. Will you stop it? <laughs> if you remember when we were doing this. Uh, we were looking for, after a precipitation occurs, so we're t combining ions together, and then they find one another precipitate, and it goes to the left. That was where we had to make sure that we write the solid on the left side, because that's the way that the KSP expression assumes we're writing the reaction. So we had this problem. We had silver ions and iodate ions that shifted back to the left. And I told you, assume it goes to the left completion, because that's the direction it's favorable in. Remember, the K value is 10 to the negative eighth power. So it very heavily favors the reactant side. That's the direction it was going. So we had to go all the way. And then we had to drift back to equilibrium. That was what was happening here. I had to drift back to equilibrium using the KSP. This process just makes the math much easier. It's way easier to do it this way. If you don't do it this way, you can still do the problem, but you're going to have these crazy polynomials where you're going to have like a cubed fourth power, a fifth power polynomial that you have to try to solve. If you want to do that, then, then don't 